Okay. So the first thing that you need to do is click on the link to go to the starter project and then you can go ahead and make sure you're signed in to Scratch. You'll see your username at the top right hand corner if you are. Click see inside. And we need to remix this starter project. Um, you'll notice the only thing in here is a backdrop with a black line at the bottom and that's because we're going to use this backdrop and with the black line to detect if like those falling objects have reached the bottom of the ground. So if you're going to add your own backdrops, you're going to need to add a solid color line at the bottom and I can show you how to do that in a later screencast. Um, the only other thing you need to do in part one is add a sprite. It should be the sprite you picked during your planning period. I'm going to go ahead and add a um, let's see, a dinosaur. Great. So I have my dinosaur sprite and I'm all done with part one, ready to go to part two. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention in part one is make sure that you've renamed your project no longer Falling Objects Starter Project, but it's Falling Objects Your Name. Um, okay, so in part two, what we're going to do is make the sprite move smoothly to the left and the right. And this is going to be very similar to what we did in the racing game where we had um, the cars turn and move forward until the keys were no longer being pressed. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and pull out two key press events. One for the left arrow and one for the right arrow. And we used that or created that smooth movement using the repeat until block. So I'm going to pull two of those out. And I wanted to repeat until I wanted to keep moving until I'm no longer touching or pressing the key. So I know I'm going to need this not operator. And then in the sensing menu, I can find the sensing block to see if I'm pressing a key. So I need one for right arrow and one for the left arrow. And unlike in the racing game, we aren't going to be moving 10 steps or moving negative 10 steps. We're going to be changing just the x value because I only want the character to move along the x axis. So if I'm going to the right, I'm going to change x by a positive 10 amount value, and let's test that out. Great. And if I'm going to the left, I'm going to be changing x by a negative 10 value, and let's test that out. Great. It works. So that's part two. See you for part three.